Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is Blackwell TV. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Junkies build, seeing exactly what we can do with that build and how far we can take it with the weapons that we've got. In this video, you're going to see five weapons being used. We have the armor piercing automatic combat rifle. We're going to be using the variant that is automatic and the non-automatic version of this weapon. Both of these weapons will have the 38 receivers on them instead of the 45s and they will both use the suppressor. We also have a lever action for you today as well. It's got 25% faster fire rate. Remember, all these weapons are junkies builds, so they give you more damage the more your withdrawal effect. This one has a hardened receiver and a suppressor as well, and it's outputting over 200 base damage. Moving on, we've got an explosive hunting rifle. Now, this one's been donated by Retro Salmon. We've called it Salmon's Substance Abuse because it is a junkies build and it came from Salmon. This one's got a 50 cal receiver on it. It's also got a suppressor on it, and this one is over 250 base damage as well. Remember, explosive damage is in effect as well here, and it uses 25% less VAT AP cost. We've got a Junkies Deathclaw Gauntlet as well. This one's a three star, gives you 50% extra limb damage, more damage the more your withdrawal effect, and you take 15% less damage while blocking. So they're not really pushing the output, these extra perks, but they are quite useful. This one doesn't have the third Deathclaw prong, so bear in mind that you can improve all of these weapons a little bit further to get a little bit more damage out of them, maybe 20 to 30% extra. This one is outputting 450 base damage, so with perks and mutations, we can definitely push that up a little bit further. And finally, rounding things out, we've got ourselves a Junkies Handmade. This one's got a hardened receiver as well. There's no suppressor on this one because I don't have the mod for it just yet. This one's outputting one to five base rates, and there's not really much else to say about that at this time. A quick look at our effects today. We have five addictions. The five that I chose here are Alcohol, Daddy-O, Day Tripper, Medex, and Mentats. I do have a list of all 12, as you can see here. So really sort of pick and choose which addictions you want to have to benefit this build. You'll need a maximum of five addictions for it to adjust your output. And mutations. The only mutation that we're rocking at the moment that will affect this build is Adrenal Reaction. And that will only trigger when you get low health. So that will improve your damage output. So bear that one in mind as well. Moving on to perks. Now I'm not going to be moving many perks around for this build. I'm simply going to be taking off Rifleman to put on Commando. Again, as you can see, you can max out Rifleman to get an extra 20% damage. Same with Commando. You can max out those perks to get an extra 20% damage. We are also rocking Radical, which will give us extra strength at low health. That's useful for the Deathlord Gauntlet. Demolition Expert rank 5. That one's going to be useful for the Junkies Explosive Hunting Rifle. Covert Operative. That one is maxed out and that's going to be helping our sneak attacks. Adrenaline, which which is useful against mobs as it will stack 10% damage per kill for 30 seconds. And finally, Bloody Mess, which gives us an extra 15% damage. So that's the build right now. Looking at the melee side of things, we're going to be using Iron Fist maxed out at level 3, Incisor maxed out at level 3, and Martial Artist maxed out at level 3. These are to help the swing speed and the damage output for the gauntlet because it is an unarmed weapon. And finally, for the ranged attacks, we are going concentrated fire so we can aim for those headshots for those critical hits to maximize our damage output. So let's take a look at the automatic combat rifle in action. So we've headed to the White Springs Hotel. We're gonna be taking on some rad stags, super mutants and liberators in this footage, taking a look at the sneak attack damage being ramped up to 2.5 and the critical hits as well. I'm not particularly impressed by the automatic combat rifle, if I'm being honest. The accuracy of the VAT is not really significant. And as you can see here, the critical hit on this super mutant doesn't seem to be too impressive. We're hitting 165s with those crit hits. Another crit hit here, it's hitting 206. Now I believe that is because adrenaline's stacking there. 206 on the critical hit on the headshot doesn't seem to be too impressive, really. Moving on, we get sneak attacks here and we are outputting about 180 on average without the critical hit. So I don't know exactly what is going on with the automatic crit hit here. We've got another one here and that's outputting 171 and 191. As I say, it's it's not particularly impressive. The sneak attack's doing its job, but the critical hit is not really significant in comparison to those sneak attacks. So with the perks that we've got involved and the, the, the sneak hits as well as the crit hits, I feel that the automatic combat rifle is probably not your best option for a rifle. We'll have a look at some others and we'll see just exactly where the uh, the combat rifle should be hitting. It is quite poor in comparison to maybe the lever action or the hunting rifle, but we'll take a look at that. The rate of fire obviously is quite useful for that weapon. Next up, we've got the combat rifle. Now we've taken the automatic receiver off and we have replaced it with a refined receiver. So let's take on some ghouls and see what the stats come up with. 
Okay, our first critical hit here is against a charred feral ghoul. Level 62, we're going for the headshot. We've got 65% chance of hitting and we do 309 damage. Not too bad. I don't believe that adrenaline has triggered at this point. So we'll finish that ghoul off and we move on. So as you can see, the, the only difference between the automatic combat rifle and the semi-automatic combat rifle is the fire rate and the accuracy. We were able to ramp up the crit hits with the sneak attack to well over 400 damage, which is quite successful in comparison to the automatic. So if I was to use a combat rifle like this, I would definitely get rid of the automatic receiver and replace it with a semi-automatic for sure. We've lined up another crit hit here and we're going with 486 damage, which is clearly a lot better than the automatic equivalent. One thing to note, I have taken off Commando and switched it over to Rifleman. However, we haven't maxed any of those cards out, so they are still doing the same percentage of damage increase per weapon style. So we're getting the extra 30% for the Commando for the automatic and we're getting 30% for the Rifleman build for the non-automatic version as well. Next up, we've got the Handmade. Now, this is one of the most favored weapons on Fallout 76. As you can see, it's doing 284 damage. No crit hit there. I think there was an arm shot. It's pushing 300 damage without the crit hit, which is pretty impressive. It's got a good accuracy on it. It's got a good range on it as well. This one isn't suppressed. So if it was suppressed, you could get even more damage output if you're using those sneak attacks. You can get them more frequent as well. And this is one of the favored weapons to get sneak attacks on the queen. So you may want to consider this kind of weapon if you are doing a lot of blast zones, a lot of nuke zones. Okay, so it's outputting about 73 under pressure while in danger. It's got a good fire rate, as I say, it's got a good accuracy as well. The range is pretty decent as well. The scope is accurate too. Hip firing is good. It's just a very good all round weapon. You can get it in automatic or semi-automatic. Again, I prefer semi-automatic variant. I feel it's got a very tighter spread. Okay, there's our first crit hit. We've got 716 with the sneak attack damage as well. And that was a headshot. We're following it up with a 543 with the sneak attack. And as you can see, if you place your shots in the right order, you can really, really do some damage with this weapon. Adrenaline starting to trigger as well. We're getting 605 there with the sneak attack. If you can get six attacks before you trigger a sneak crit hit, then you can be really outputting some heavy damage here. So if you consider it well, and if you strategize correctly, you can do some absolutely phenomenal damage with this weapon. And remember, these perks are not maxed out, so you can get an extra 20% out of them quite comfortably as well. You can also push your damage output with things like Psycho Tats, Psycho, Fury if you're using a melee build, Nuka Shine if you're using a melee build. Bear in mind, if you do get addicted to those chems as well, if you use Addictor, you will remove all your addictions. If you use a cooked Rad Scorpion Omelette, you'll lose one addiction, but you can't tell the game which one you want to lose, so it could be completely random, so it could be a favorite addiction, so bear that in mind as well. Without using adrenaline here, we found a stray ghoul and we're going in for a sneak attack headshot. Without the critical hit, we're outputting 543. So you can see exactly what this weapon's damage is doing. Okay, we found ourselves a three-star legend here and we hit the sneak attack for 2.5 times damage, outputting 669 with a little bit of adrenaline from that deer kill from earlier. And that isn't a critical hit. Now that we have got the critical hit, we can take the headshot on this second legendary ghoul, this two star. And with the critical hit and the sneak attack combined, we can output 874 damage comfortably. That really puts it in perspective with the automatic combat rifle from earlier and the handmade is just in a league of its own in comparison. Moving on to the lever action rifle here. Now we have the suppressor on this weapon. We've also got a hardened receiver, but everything else is pretty much standard. Nothing special about this weapon at all other than it is a junkie's lever action. Heading into the golf course clubhouse as always. This is a good testing ground for ghouls because they'll pretty much always spawn here and they're quite consistent in how they attack. They may be lying down when they attack you, lol Bethesda, but they typically are standing up quite a lot of the time. As you can see here, we've got a sneak attack that outputs 575 straight away. Also something you've got to consider when you're using an automatic weapon, the fire rate is higher, so it's gonna burn through your AP quite a lot. Now we are over encumbered in this playthrough, so bear that in mind as well. Every time we move, we're gonna burn away some of our AP, but also the automatic, every shot that misses still counts for AP as well as the ones that hit. And the damage of the output on the automatic automatic receiver typically is less than the semi-automatic, so you've got to bear that in mind as well. Okay, at the moment we're just going for leg shots because there's more chance of us to hit the target, and then we're building up that critical hit so we can use that on a headshot later on. 
Now, the sensitive areas do pop up as yellow, but they do not consider those to be crit hits. So now we've lined up a critical hit. I've lined up a headshot as well, and we are ready to pull the trigger on this one. And we can see here quite clearly we're doing 1300 and seven damage. Now, if you consider you could max out adrenaline before you pull that trigger on that critical headshot, you could do a lot more damage. Clearing more ghouls. We've got another critical hit. We're going for the arm shot. It's 540, 580. Let's go for that headshot. Let's see what we can output there. Fourteen fifty on that headshot. The sneak attack crit hit on the ghoul. Fourteen fifty. That's thirteen fifty six. How on earth am I doing fourteen forty now? That is incredible. And again, let me remind you: you can push these stats even further if you max out those rifleman perk cards. So the lever actions definitely want to be considering when you are in Appalachia trying to take down ghouls or take down the scorched or take down anything. All right, moving on to our final ranged weapon of the video. This one is a Junkies 50 cal sniper rifle. It's a Junkies explosive, which does more damage and it uses up 25% less action points. And uh, I've got to thank Retro Salmon for this one. He gifted it to us and it's a very, very effective weapon. Retro Salmon's using a bloody build, so he doesn't really need this weapon. So he's passed it off to us to give it a go. And that's why it's called Salmon's Substance Abuse, because it is a Junkies build. For this weapon, we're using Demolition Expert rank 5, which is a very effective card, which means your explosives do 60% more damage. It's a very effective card for any explosive affected weapons. So as always, we are traveling around White Springs, picking off ghouls where necessary. And straight out the gate, we've got a ghoul here, which we have done two damage attacks to. Obviously, you've got the uh, the bullet penetration plus the explosive damage there. And you can see straight out the gate, we're doing 672 damage. Seven seventeen there. Two four seven because they've now noticed us, but we've cleared them out quite quickly. Okay, this is a sneak attack. Eight hundred eight plus a sixty eight plus a sixty nine on the explosive. Eight hundred fifty three plus seventy four. So we're over nine hundred damage there without using a critical hit. Again, over nine hundred damage on that one as well. The fire rate isn't the greatest. Obviously, there's only five bullets in a clip, but if you are accurate enough, you can take down enemies pretty convincingly. This is a headshot with the crit hit. We're looking at 1892 plus the explosive damage there. So as we look at the critical headshot there, sneak attack as well, we're doing 1892 plus 72 damage, which is 1964 damage in total. You can add more damage to these weapons, as I've mentioned, simply level up the perk cards that we are using, such as Rifleman and Commando. Maybe you could even use some chems to push that damage up even more. So realistically, we can look at sneak crits being over 2000 damage quite comfortably with the additional Rifleman perks. And finally, we're gonna be moving on to the Junkies Deathclaw Gauntlet. Okay, because sneak attacks don't really work with this weapon, we are just gonna go in there and kill. Because this is a general junkies build, I'm just gonna show you an introduction to these weapons, and if you wish to pursue them, you can max out the according perk cards. 1916, 1031, and 2062. Now remember, you can use things like Nuka Shine and Psycho to push your unarmed attack significantly higher. But bear it in mind, if you are using vintage Nuka Shine, you could be teleported randomly somewhere on the map because that's one of the side effects of that beverage. So being able to whip up 2000 damage is very significant and it's very useful. This is what happens when you don't use all your perk cards for carry weight stuff, such as strong back, um, traveling pharmacy, through hiker, you know, and so on. You can really ramp up the damage output and have a lot more fun with the game rather than hoarding things, keeping things in your stash, and then being forced into using these carry weight perks to be able to play the game, to make the game playable. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. If you've got any comments or feedback on the video or on the channel, let me know, drop that in the comments, and I'll do my very best to answer them all. If you did like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. Ring that bell to get those notifications as well. Anyway, that's all from me. So peace and love to you and yours. Take care of yourself, and I'll catch you on the next video.